Personal finance practice problem using Excel. Bond purchased on margin leverage investment. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank, example, answer key. Let's look at it now. Information left, calculations right. We're going to be imagining that we purchased a bond in the past. However, instead of paying just cash for the bond, we basically purchased it on a margin. We took out, in essence, a loan. We leveraged in order to purchase it. And we're imagining then that we're going to sell the bond in the future. And what will be the impact of basically that leveraged or purchase on a margin investment. So the second tab here, the practice tab, will have some pre-formatted cells so you can work the practice problem with less Excel formatting. Third tab, we're gonna actually work the problem and do the Excel formatting. If you don't have anything, you can open up a blank worksheet. I would throw down the baseline formatting by going to the triangle up top, right click in the selected area, format the cells within it. And then I typically start off with currency, bracketed numbers, no dollar sign, no decimal. I'm not going to hit OK because we already have it here. I'm just going to X out of it. Then add your data on the left, formatting cells as needed, such as the percentages. Make a skinny C column and we're good to go. So we're going to have the information on the left. We got the bond is at the par value, $1,000 bond. The coupon rate we're going to say is the 10% maturity years, 20 years. We're going to assume that we purchased the bond at a price of $1,135.55 and we paid 20% for it. So here's kind of the tricky thing here. We didn't purchase it just for cash. We basically purchased it on margin, in essence, taking out a loan for the purchase of it and paying only a portion, in this case, 20% of the cash. We borrowed or bought on margin, used interest payments on bond to pay the interest on the loan. So we can imagine if we took out a loan in order to buy the investment, then we're going to have to pay back the principal of the loan and we're going to have interest to pay on the loan that we took out so we're going to imagine that that uh, we're going to be using the interest payments from the bond that we purchased which pays us periodic interest payments to pay off the loan interest payments that we took out in order to buy the bond hoping that the bond goes up in value if the bond goes up in value we will have a gain that will be higher than it otherwise would be given the fact that we purchased it on margin we purchased it by leveraging it However, if it goes down, it will also amplify the loss that we'll have as well. And you can see this, this is typically seen for individual investors in like a home, because when you purchase a home, most people purchase the home and they take out a loan on the home, a mortgage on the home. They do that for necessity purposes, not just for investment purposes, because they want to use, obviously, the home. But the same thing is in effect there. Oftentimes, if the market goes up for the home, then you, that could affect you quite positively given the fact that you purchased it on the margin. You invested, like if you invested $200,000 that you didn't have, right? You only had 20% of that. And now the whole $200,000 is going up in value because you purchased it basically on the margin, right? You leveraged the investment. However, if it goes down, that, you know, that, that causes problems. So that's the, that's the issue here. Bottom line, you need to be careful with like leveraged investments. So in any case, we got the market rate at the 7%. We're going to say we got to pay 11.01 .01 in order to take out the loan just to get an idea of the loan. Okay, so let's say that we're going to sell this thing at this point in time and calculate what the current price is for us to sell the bond. So we're going to sell it at this point in time. We bought it at this amount. Now we're going to imagine it's a later date. and We're going to basically sell it based on this information. Let's calculate the current price we think we could sell it for. So we got the current bond price, we're going to say. Let's put some black and white headers, home tab. We're going to go to the font group and make that black and white. And this is going to be the present value of interest. And this is the present value of the, of the let's say, the face amount. Let's say face amount at maturity. So those are standard present value calculations that we've done in the past. So I'll do this fairly quickly. We're going to say negative present value shift nine rate is going to be the market rate, which we're going to say is that 10, 7% down here. And we're going to assume it's a normal annual, an annual instead of semi-annual. So we don't have to do any funny business 
by dividing by two or anything, comma, number of periods is gonna be 20. And once again, we're gonna assume it annual so that we'll keep it at that, comma. We're gonna have a series of annuity payments that we're going to be receiving, but as we receive them, we're gonna be using them to pay off the loan. So that's gonna be the 1,000 times the 10%. So that's what we're gonna get. We're gonna say enter. And then we've got the face amount that we're gonna get at the end if of the bond or whoever owns the bond will be getting $1,000. So negative present value, shift nine, the rate, market rate once again, 7%, comma, number of periods is once again 20, comma, this time not a payment because not an annuity, two commas, we're in the future value component, taking that $1,000 and bringing it back. So that's the 258. So this is gonna be the bond price, which is the sales price, right? Sales price at this point in time equals the sum of those two. Let's add some decimals on it. Let's add some decimals and we're gonna go number, add a couple decimals. Let's put an underline, font group, underline. Let's make it blue and bordered, selecting these items, go to the font group. We're gonna go to the bucket drop down. If you don't have that blue, it's in the color wheel going into the color wheel, the wheel O color. I just need one color, just that color. That's the only one I use. Home tab, font group. I use the other one sometimes, but not as not that much. Any case, then we can also think that, uh, that uh, the loan that we took out, let's just consider what happened in the past when we considered purchasing this. We said, okay, in the past, we're gonna purchase it for 1,135, 55, because we think it's gonna go up in value, and then we're gonna be planning on selling it. I'm gonna make a skinny G over here and put that information on the right. So I'm gonna put my cursor on the skinny C, home tab, format paint it, and make a skinny G. And then let's just think about that. So that means I took out a loan. Let's just imagine the loan that we took out, what's really happening when we buy it on the margin. And let's put some, uh, some black and white. Let's go to the font group. Let's make this black and white. So we're gonna imagine we took out a loan for 80% of this amount, right? We're gonna say, well, we bought it for 1,135.55 and we took out a loan for 80% 80, 80 of it. So we bought 80% of it with that much of a loan. Let's say that the rate on the loan is 11 percent and we're and oftentimes when we take out a loan on the personal side of things we imagine paying it back in monthly installments that are even like a mortgage which has principal and interest but you could also imagine structuring the loan in a, in other ways such as i'm only going to be paying you the rent on the money similar to a bond and i'm just going to be paying you the interest and then at the end when, it, when the loan is done, I'll pay you the principal back at that point in time. So we just have to pay the interest payments. And then when I sell the bond or when it matures, whatever, then we can pay back the, the loan. So we're going to say, let's say the rate then is at the 11%. So we've got to borrow at 11%, we're going to say, and 11.01. .01. So if I go a uh, number group, I'm going to percentify that. 1101 about let's put an underline here that means that we're going to be paying interest payments payments equal to the 908 times the 11 percent which i made that equal the hundred dollars why because we borrowed what we could borrow that we think that we can pay off the rent on the loan that we took out with the coupon payment by of the bond because the bond's going to be paying us a thousand dollars times ten percent it's gonna be paying us 100 and we're gonna use that to pay off the loan because we're hoping that the bond goes up in value and then we make a gain by basically selling the bond that we had leveraged. So let's make this a percent, add a couple percents. And so you can see that in this case, then we really only paid for the bond, even though it costs 1,135, we only paid 20% of that, which is the 227. And then we took out a loan which we're just going to be paying off with the interest on the bond. And if the bond goes up, then we're going to we're going to make out because we're going to get a gain and we really only spent $227 would be the idea, right? So let's put let's put let's make this black and white or blue and bordered, blue and bordered. Okay. So then we're going to say the the sales price is here 
we're going to say that we bought it for here. So normally we would say, okay, what's the dollar profit based on the current price? So generally the profit calculation, I'm going to select these and I'm going to make this uh, black and white. Let's make this black and white. And we're going to say that the price of the bonds uh, were, or the sales price, we're going to say is equal to the 1,017.82. Let's add some decimals, number group, add a couple decimals. And we purchased it for the 1,135.55, but we, we didn't actually pay that much because we bought it on, we took out a loan. So I'm going to say number, let's add a couple decimals. So that means the profit from a conventional sense, profit would be the difference between the two. This would be equal to the one. 317 minus the the 1135 let's add a couple decimals let's put an underline here font group underline and then if we compare that profit to what we purchased it for this should be per let's say purchase price here let's compare that to the purchase price we're going to get then the profit percent, profit percent, percent profit, which is going to be equal to the 182.27 divided by this number. Add some decimals, home tab number, add some decimals. Let's put some decimals on this one. We're going to go, we're going to add a couple decimals here. Let's put an underline, font group underline. I don't really need this cell to be black, so I'm going to go up top and say let's format paint the one above it to this one and let's just make this a little bit longer so it fits our header in it and then i'll make this blue and bordered so make, make this blue and bordered font group border blue so there we have it now there's our our percent our profit percent but really we can compare it to the actual cash that we paid because actually we only paid you know 20 percent of of this amount so if i compare it to the to like on a cash flow basis this is the percent return percent return on cash investment let's think about it that way and select these two items font group let's make this black and white and then let's say okay well the amount paid in cash that we invested is really the price that when we purchased it, the purchase price is equal to the 113555, adding a couple decimals, number group, couple decimals, but we only paid a percent, which is 20%. So equals to 20%. Let's make that a percent, number group, percentizing it, font group, underlining it. And so we're going to say, let's copy the amount here, copy and paste. I'm going to remove the colon at the end removing the colon put this in the outer column this equals the 135 1135.55 times 20 percent adding a couple decimals home tab number group decimalize 227.11 let's put some indentation here selecting these three home tab alignment indent i'm going to go alignment indent again so re we really only paid 227.11 in terms of cash flow right because we took a loan for the rest of it so the profit so if i compare that to the profit uh the profit that we had which is i'll just say this is equal to this equals to 182.27 we calculated up top adding some decimals number group couple decimals putting an underline underneath it that's going to give us our let's call it percent return on cash investment and so if I divide this out, the 127.11 divided by the 182.27, we're going to go to the number group percent uh, here. So there we have that. Hold on a second. Let's do that the other way around. This should be the profit. 182.27 divided by the amount of cash paid, the 227.11. Now we can add some decimals. So that... So if i if i think about it at the actual cash flow that we paid and compare the profit to that we're at 80.26 which is obviously a much higher 
profit percent than the 1605 and that's of course due to the leverage so we made really the amount of cash we pay the 22711 go a lot further in terms of cash flow purposes because we leveraged it and we happened to have a gain now again if you if you had a loss that's gambling that's a bit more that the, there's a lot more risk involved in that because if there's a loss it could it could amplify the losses as well but that's the general idea we'll take a look at that in a second let's just consider it one other way i'm going to put my let's make this blue and bordered blue and bordered so you might think about it this way too i'm going to put my cursor on the skinny g and make a skinny j skinny g home tab format painter making a skinny j let's just think about it from a cash flow cash flow perspective and i'm going to select these two items we're going to go to the font group make that black and white let's make this one a little bit larger so we've got the bond sales price so when we sell it we're going to be selling it for this amount so that's going to be the cash inflow that we would have and then we have the cash outflows which means we're going to pay off the loan that we took out because we've been paying the interest payments every time we get an inflow of the interest payment we're assuming we we're using that from the bond to pay off the interest on the loan so those two i'm just assuming kind of net out here right so then when when i get the money from selling the bond i'm going to be paying off the loan which was at the 108.44 and then we also paid out the 20 percent when we purchased the bond i'm going to say negative this 1135 when we purchased the bond times the 20 percent so that's the cash outflow let me pull that to the to this side and then that's the cash paid for the bond so if i if i put the underline here that's going to give us the net cash flow equals the sum of these and that's going to be the 182 right so there's the 182 basically profit that we calculated and we compare that to the to the original you know loan amount that we put down which is going to be the loan i'm sorry to the original cash that we paid of the one of the 227 that's how much we put down up front home tab font group underline so that's going to give us the percent return on cash it's another way you know get get into the same bottom line so we're then going to say number group percent let's add a couple decimals let's add some decimals to this whole thing number group add a couple decimals let's put some blue and border around this home tab font group border blue border blue so there we have it so so again the idea then being okay we're going to try to buy the bond here but we're going to leverage it uh and we're going to be able to do so by taking out a loan sufficient that the interest on the bond can pay off the loan they we leverage the loan therefore we can go further with less cash and if things go positive then we're going to amplify our gain with relation to the actual cash outflow but of course if i if i go the other way on this and say we had a loss let's change the the market rate down here and let's say the market rate went to, uh, went to like 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 uh 12% or something like that. So now I've got a sales price of 85061 if I was to sell it. So if I was to sell it, now I've got a loss of the 28494 which would be a loss of 25% compared to the original purchase price. If I compare that loss to the cash flow, now I've got a loss of uh 12546% comparing it to that to the amount of cash paid uh in that scenario so you can see how that leverage component when you're thinking about leverage we might talk more about leverage in the future it could it's great it can amplify the the upside if things go well and but however also it can amplify the downside as well so you want to be able to use a leverage appropriately get and consider the risks that are going to be involved and have an you know an optimal leverage level or use it in an appropriate fashion. So we might dive more into that in future presentations.